thanks for joining us today. My name is Anna Malzon, and I'm the coordinator for the Council for the Arts at St. Joseph's College Long Island campus. Today we're at the Planting Fields and we will be touring this beautiful Gold Coast mansion. More specifically, we will be taking a look at this beautiful exhibit of Everett Shins um, entitled Operatics that is here until November 14th. Um, today we are joined by the lovely Meredith Brown, who will be um, the curator and director of the museum affairs here um, at the planting fields. Um, she will be our guide on this adventure this afternoon, so let's welcome Meredith. Do a quick, quick swap there. Thanks, Anna. Uh, sure. So um, this, welcome to Planting Fields. Um, it, this is a Gold Coast estate. It was built by W.R. and May Co. Uh, between the house we're in now, called Co. Hall, was built between 1918 and 1921, but they started working on the site as early as about 1907. Um, and they lived here, or some portion of the family lived here off and on throughout the year until 1955. Um, as Anna said, my name is Meredith Brown. I'm the Director of Museum Affairs and Chief Curator here. And um, if you have any questions as we go along on this tour today, feel free to type them into the chat and I will do my best to respond um, as quickly as I can. Um, so welcome to Evershin Operatics. Um, this is an, an exhibition focused on a particular artist from the early 20th century, an American avant-garde artist named Everett Shin. He was born in Philadelphia um, in the late, I, I always forget the date, but luckily it's written here on the wall behind me, in 1876. Um, and then he moved and he trained a, as a illustrator for newspapers uh, before photography was regularly used uh, in mainstream media. So he trained as an illustrator. He became part of a group called the Eight, um, which is well known for being a kind of rule-breaking group of artists um, that showed together in New York City in the early 20th century. But he had this kind of other career that he did throughout his, throughout his life. Um, he was the longest living member of the Eight. He died in the middle of the century in 1955, 53. Oops, thanks, text. Um, and, and for that aspect of his career, he was engaged in this uh, art movement called Rococo Revival. So Rococo art, as some of you may know, um, was a popular art form in France uh, in the 1700s, kind of the last of the, the Louis, Marie Antoinette, if you think about that time period. So it's very decorative, lots of pretty ladies and gardens and things that are over the, kind of a little bit over the top. Um, and that Rococo revival was very popular among American elites in the early 20th century. So you know, you think about the great Gatsby or those kinds of wealthy Americans um, in the early 20th century. And so W.R. and May Co. were two such people. Um, and May in particular was really interested in the contemporary art of her time and Everett Shin was one of the premier contemporary artists. So most of the works in this exhibition belonged, were acquired by the Coes. Um, there are a couple of things that we've borrowed from other places, but they show Shin's um, engagement with this, with this Rococo revival movement, this kind of theatrical, decorative aesthetic. Um, this is one of my favorite works in the show, um, partly because it looks like a watercolor, but it's actually made out of pastels. So this is called Lady in a Tree from 1914, um, and Shin developed this really unique way of working with pastels, which um, is pretty much unique to him. I mean, if you think about artists more famous for working in pastel, like Degas, the, the pastel is a little bit chalky. You can see that a little bit in this other Shin drawing from uh, 1914, which is also pastel, but it looks a little bit more like crayon or something. But this here is very saturated. The color is saturated. The, um, it's not chalky in appearance, and that's because what, what he did was wet the paper, get the paper entirely wet, and then draw on the wet paper with pastel, which made the color kind of muddied and disappear. And then when it dried, it came back to this very vibrant, these vibrant pinks and blues and yellows, 
um, but without that chalkiness that Pastel is known for. So, and I just think Shin was also kind of, some of his critics claimed that he did, didn't have a stronghold on anatomy, which I suppose you could see here, that is an extremely long leg this woman has. Um, but yeah, so this is one of my favorite works in the show. It belongs to our collection. And you can see it's got that kind of fun, decorative quality. Now I'm going to take you over to here because part of what is interesting about Shin's career is that he was also very involved in the theater. Um, he was friends with a lot of playwrights and actors. He himself was an actor. He started his own theatrical troupe. So these are two studies. They're oil on canvas, uh, done around 1907 as um, studies for the Stuyvesant Theater, which is, still exists it's in the theater district in Manhattan. Um, and it was opened by David Belasco, who was a very famous Broadway producer um, in the early part of the 20th century. And there, and Shin um, was commissioned by Belasco to do this entire suite of murals. And then um, Belasco also commissioned the Tiffany Company to do all of the glass lighting. So if you find yourself in the theater district these days, see if you can sneak into the Belasco Theater. It's quite impressive. This is the playbill that he did for the Tiffany. Yes. So this is the playbill that Shin did for. Um, the opening night. So it's a pretty impressive mm -hmm. little little book for, for the opening night. And then the interior of the book has all of its uh, reproductions of all of Shin's decorations for the theater and some explanation. A lot of it is allegorical and nymphs and mm -hmm. goddesses and things. So now we're going to head down the hall. Open the door. This is where the adventure starts. We're going to walk down the hallway this way, and we are heading to the, look at this beautiful hallway. We are going to be heading to the other end of this hallway, and we are going to Mrs. Coe's bathroom, yes. dressing room. Her dressing room. It's her, also her bathroom, but oh, dressing okay. room is a... Dressing room is a more decorous word. Um, so we're passing down the long hallway here. Co Hall is a 65-room Tudor revival mansion. And it has this interesting, down this hallway, it has this interesting kind of two-layered hallway with guest bedrooms up on this kind of faux balcony. And windows out onto the landscape on the other side. And then we find ourselves here in Mrs. Coe's bathroom. So these works were the suite of paintings. There are 10 paintings in this room. And this suite of paintings was commissioned specifically for this space uh, by the Coe's from Everett Shin. So you can see this is done around 1920. So it's later than that lady in the tree that we saw earlier, um, and you can see that this kind of decorative theatrical aesthetic has really evolved. So he's, he's got these dramatic curtains. It's as if every little panel is a stage set. Um, and there are these lovely ladies frolicking in the fields, in the gardens of Versailles, presumably, um, surrounded by baskets of flowers and random patches of fabric. Um, and, you know, he's really, there's a kind of lushness to the colors and the paint and, um, and there's this sort of, it's as if there's a story going on, although who's to say <laughs> what story is being told. And the Coe's, you know, you walk around this house and you think that it's so old and old fashioned and um, in some respects it is, but it was built a hundred years ago and they really, you know, this work was made to engage with art and art history from several hundred years before, but it was also there it was very contemporary. It was quite kind of avant-garde at the at the time. So it was um, you know, the Coes really were art lovers and contemporary art lovers, even though this doesn't look too radical to us these days. Mm -hmm. This is not a bad it's a beautiful dressing room. I, I not a bad dressing room. Pretty red. <laughs> okay. So these panels are 
for commission for this space. So that's really, really cool. Yeah, so they were made specifically for this space. Everett Shin, a lot of this decorative work that he did, this uh, Rococo revival, what I term operatic kind mm -hmm. of work, um, a lot of the work that he did was commissioned. So we're going to head now downstairs. And back down the hallway. And we're going to go into a room known as the reception room. You'll see as we walk down, this is very kind of old world English environment. And we're going to go into a room that is much more French in feeling, um, where we will see a piano, a Steinway piano from the turn of the century, the last turn of the last century, that was that belonged to Clyde Fitch, who was one of the most famous playwrights at the time. At one point, he had five plays running on Broadway simultaneously. Um, he's not terribly well known anymore, but that such is the way history goes. Um, and so he had a designer named Elsie DeWolf come decorate his luxurious Midtown apartment and she brought in her friend, Everett Shin, um, to do some of, to paint some of the furniture. So in a moment, once we get all the way down the spiral mm -hmm. stairs, we got home. We will and see. the reception room that we're going to was Mrs. Coe's more specifically? Yes. So it... Um, when it doesn't have this elaborate piano in it, it's normally filled with sitting room furniture, and it is where she would have received guests mm -hmm. and entertained her friends for tea. Mm -hmm. Just taking this beautiful space for a second. specifically this beautiful piano. Let me see if I can back up a little bit to get more of a full view. <laughs> and then I will go close. So a little bit hard to see probably on camera. Um, but interestingly, the most elaborate part of the piano is the underside of the lid, um, which really would primarily be revealed to the person playing the piano. So there is a little bit of a kind of from a little gift from an artist mm -hmm. to an artist at work here. Um, this is purportedly a scene of Moliere practicing a play, one of his plays, in the Garden of Versailles, rehearsing a play. Don't ask me which one is Moliere. <laughs> or which play. Or which play. <laughs> but it does indeed look like Versailles. And um, seems like a nice location yeah. to see some theater. Yes, look at that. The detail around. Yeah, so the piano itself is festooned. It's a, a mahogany piano, festooned with all of these ribbons and floral baskets and various other decorative scenes. Um, this work was done, this piano was painted in 1906, so it's much earlier than the work that we just, here, I'll take this down so you can. Um, it's much earlier than the work that we saw upstairs in Mrs. Coe's dressing room, but it does, you can see there is this kind of similar lovely ladies frolicking in beautiful gardens, this motif over and over again. Yes, the top is not, f because it's, been exposed to more light than the yeah. underneath part. It hasn't fared quite as well. It's it's darkened a bit and it's kind of hard to read. But it's not too shabby. Yeah, it's beautiful. A piano. Does anyone play this? Do we know? Um, it or can be played. It? it has been played yeah. at the exhibition opening. Oh, that's right. We had a pianist come play the piano. Um, it. This is a, a loan. This piano normally lives down the road in Glen Cove. Mm -hmm. um, and... Fortunately for the piano, the man who owns it is an expert in pianos, and so he keeps it in very good condition, properly tuned up. So should we move to our next location? Yes.
And we are going to be going outside. We're going outside. Okay. You want to hold this? You can hold this. Okay. I'll do a little. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. We're going to be going out now. We're headed outside to the garden. some of the exterior of the house as we go out. So this is what's referred to as the cloister garden. Both WR and Mako were very interested in birds. So if you, um, you can see it a little bit here. There are a lot of carvings of birds. There are many paintings of birds, bird art around. Um, they kept birds. In fact, Mrs. Coe's collection of parrots and macaws were housed in that very bathroom where we just oh, were interesting. on um, silver bird stands. Oh, interesting. So, must not have smelled very good. <laughs> Interesting to say the least. But, yes. yes, it's an unusual place to keep your birds, your <laughs> pet birds. But um, here we are. The sun has come out for us today, which is very nice. This is the exterior of Coe Hall. And we have recently done a major restoration project on this feature over here called the West Portico which functioned as a kind of outdoor living room. Uh, when the Coes lived here, they had furniture, wicker furniture out there. And so you can imagine that's not a bad spot to, to have lunch. So just above there is Mrs. Coe's bathroom. So you could see from, from the window there, a walk down this passageway to the Italian garden, which was her favorite garden on the property. The entire property is 409 acres, um, and that is its, it has retained its 409 acres over its 100 plus year life, which is pretty unusual for these mm -hmm. old yeah. estates. Um, and it was, the landscape was designed by the Olmsted brothers, who are the sons of Frederick Law Olmsted, who is the landscape architect who designed Central Park and Prospect Park and the Biltmore in North Carolina um, and really was sort of the founder of the American landscape architecture. And speaking of landscapers, we have some of our excellent landscaping team here working away in the Italian garden. And we're headed over there to the tea house. Yes, so the tea house is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, building on the property. Um, it was built around 1905 um, by the previous owners of the estate. And it was just built as a little, um, you know, maybe not quite a garden shed, but just a sort of outdoor mm -hmm. garden building. Mm -hmm. um, and the original owners actually, rather than having this lovely pool here, they had a tennis court. Oh. Uh, so the pool is conveniently the same size as a tennis court. <laughs> and when the Coes moved in, they hired Elsie DeWolf, that famous society decorator, um, and Everett Shin to transform this little outbuilding into a beautiful, lush, you'll, we'll see in a moment, kind of so cinematic little... He really had Space. his hand all, all over this interior. Right? Yeah, so he yeah. designed all aspects of this interior. We'll go inside in a second and we will see the furniture furnishings and the light fixtures um, and the painted murals were all Everett in. All right, I'm going to get my key Can you out. Open the door here. Sorry. That's, That's okay. okay. Living collections have to be watered. Yeah. It feels so special being able to come in here. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. So yeah, this is um, 
normally closed to the public, although you can see it now on this exhibition tour. Um, and you can see it really is the kind of culmination of the other, all the other Shin work that we've been looking at. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, you know, it's got the birds, so many birds in here, and this mm -hmm. lovely kind of minty, this min the kind of minty walls and ceiling and this trellis, uh, that is a signature Elsie DeWolf okay. design. Um, and you know they were very close friends, so it's a little it's a little unclear whether or not he sort of she kind of advised him on this project or if they really worked mm -hmm. together. But in any event, she clearly had her hand in it somehow. Um, but he really was allowed free reign here to make these very lush, pastoral, a little bit wacky mm -hmm. um, murals. This is oil on canvas again. Um, designed specifically for this space, these kind of lunettes, you know, this, this one is made to look like a fan. Oh, there's a parrot. And there's a parrot. Mm -hmm. There's another parrot on the other side. Mm -hmm. And a dove, many birds. Mm -hmm. um, and... Didn't you mention to me about the lighting fixtures was there? Yeah, so these polychrome lighting fixtures were all designed by Everett Shin, and I imagine um, that it was a little bit of a victory for him. He started his career, I mean, he actually trained to be a kind of industrial designer, <clears throat> and started his career very young, at, as a teenager really, um, working in an, like an industrial lighting design factory, mm -hmm. um, where he was fired for... <laughs> Or doodling, being too artistic, doodling in the margins of these kind of, of these, what was supposed to be a very straightforward lighting design, and instead he was doodling things mm -hmm. like this. But luckily for the Coes and for planting fields and for us, uh, that was not a career that worked out for him because we were very grateful to have this special treasure here and there, these, this beautiful furniture which has been here in this building in this little space since it was constructed and painted in 1915, so over a hundred years now. And as a nod to his patron, Shin put a little cameo a portrait of May Co there in the settee, which also, you know, has that same, you can see that same fan shape on the furniture furnishings that matches everything else. Mm -hmm. And the furniture also has that those blue curtains with gold tassels. Mm -hmm. um, there were kind of similarly dramatic window coverings when this space was first designed. Um, and then Mako actually sadly died in 1924, so she didn't get to enjoy this space for all that long. Um, and the, the next Mrs. Co, the next and final Mrs. Co, Caroline Co, um, was, liked this space, but wasn't as fond of the sort of over-the-topness, so the, the uh, window coverings got much less dramatic under Caroline's watch, but is this nice space. And one of the things that we've tried to do here at Planting Fields is continue the Coe's legacy of artistic patronage. So every year we commission a living artist to create a piece of art that, like, like a temporary, uh, a temporary contemporary um, work that somehow responds to the site. So the site of planting fields is the catalyst for the work. Mm -hmm. So this year, um, the, the composer Nico Muley, who is a New York, he was born in Vermont, but he's a New York-based um, contemporary classical music composer, and he designed a sound installation for us called Pastoral Indoors Outdoors, um, which plays here in the tea house, out in the Italian garden, and then there is a, another component inside. So as just a little special treat, I'm going to turn this music on for us so you can hear it. So we're going to listen to a little snippet of it. I have to tell our viewers that I did enjoy it. On my last visit here, I sat out in the 
Italian garden and I just listened to it and it was absolutely it was absolutely a all encompassing experience with the gardens and the music it was beautiful Sorry about that. Dropping things. so beautiful and um, if anyone wants to come have that well, if anyone wants to come have that experience that I had um, and also check out the exhibit for themselves the exhibition for themselves it's here until the 14th of November correct mm -hmm. and they can go online to plantingfields.org to book a tour specifically to check out the Shins works, right? Um, or they could come to the visitor center and do it as well. Yeah, drop in and you can. Uh, yeah, I hope I hope you're staying. Just can't stop the music. It's so beautiful, it just wants to be played. <laughs> um, Meredith, I want to thank you so much for taking us on this this beautiful tour today was so special and we really really appreciate you sharing all your knowledge and all this beauty with us this afternoon um, and I hope we can come back and maybe do something else in the future I hope so too and maybe when um, when we can do more things in person yeah you all can come sure. come back in person if you have again if you have any questions type them in now or you feel free to send me an email you have a specific question. My email is mbrown at plantingfields.org. Um, I'm not the speediest emailer, but I will get back to you. Um, and yeah, I hope you all have a great afternoon. Thanks for coming. Thank you.